Now on Bloomberg Intelligence, Muni's In Focus. Today's Muni's In Focus is brought to you by Build America Mutual. Insures U.S. municipal bonds that finance essential American infrastructure and provides guaranteed income to improve any portfolio. Be part of Building America. Invest in BAM insured bonds. And to do so, we go to Eric Kazaski, Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Municipal Bond Strategist. Here's my like really dumb uni question of the day. We have a massive rally in the bond market. We have a massive sell-off in the equity market. What does that wind up doing in the muni market? Unfortunately, not a lot. Um, and it's a great question. And it's one that's sort of been on top of mind for everyone in my space this morning. Like, why aren't munis rallying as hard as treasuries? And I think this goes back to just the fact that munis tend to underperform when we have sharp rallies in treasuries for no other reason than it seems that we need a day or so of like exact confirmation that this is a real move before munis tend to catch up. So let's say that this holds, you know, we have rates rally throughout the day for treasuries. You would expect to see a similar movement as far as both direction and breadth, probably by midweek next week, especially as new issues starts to roll out. And you had an interesting take on for Bloomberg Intelligence for your research earlier this week where you talked about how when it comes to sort of these midsummer approaches, usually in August, uh, it potentially could be another month of positive performance when you're looking at tax yeah. exempts. Can you elaborate a little bit more of that when it comes to the seasonality and how that plays into some of this? Yeah, absolutely. So look, we, you know, each month we take a look at, you know, both attribution for returns for the index from the month that we just had and then take a look ahead and try and get out our crystal ball and, and take a guess, right? Um, more often than times not, especially in the summertime, you could sort of read the tea leaves as far as demand and cash flows coming back to investors and get a good sense. What's interesting is that since the pandemic, What's usually happened in August, you know, for the past 10 years prior to 2020, has not been happening in the last four. We expect that actually to change this year just because of how much momentum there are in the rates market. And I think this latest jobs report is, is pretty much icing on the cake as far as really a big guidepost to breaking that ice cold spell of the last, you know, three or four Augusts in the muni market. If we get a sell a sell off in the jobs market, the a real weakness in the job market, right? Just yeah. you know, for the headline, we have JP Morgan now coming in, also doubling down here, saying there's a 50 basis point yeah. cut in September and November, then 25 bips uh, at every meeting after that. They even see a strong case for an interim meeting cut, a cut before yeah. September. In that environment, are munis a safe haven, or if the economy really contracts, do different regions mm -hmm. like desperately need more money? How does that play out on a sort of a broad eco level? Yeah. I mean, I think munis are, are really sort of the, the risk haven, right, play for those who want uncorrelated risk. Um, you know, we have a lot of foreign investors who are interested in munis, especially taxable munis, uh, because they want dollar-denominated risk assets, but something that's uncorrelated from the broader corporate markets. That holds true for tax exempts as well, right? If you look at historical correlations between tax exempt munis and let's say S&P 500, it's completely insignificant from a statistical standpoint, like a 0.19 correlation over that time period. So you're, you're really sort of getting something that doesn't behave the same way if we head into a recessionary period, which is something that I think investors would want if there's a lot of proactive um, you know, volatility in the equity markets. When you're looking at munis and especially breaking it down more toward a particular state level, which ones are leading the way for when it comes to maturities right now? You know, it's really going to be California, New York. It, you know, nothing is really that complicated in my market. And I don't want to sort of give away the secret that it's not that complicated of a market. But, you know, I think people are very sort of, I uh, think it's mired in mystery. And it really is quite simple, right? The biggest areas of population center have the biggest loads of debt. And they're the biggest issuers, right? Texas, California, New York, really sort of top of mind as far as big issuers in our space, both in exempt and the taxable market. So they're really going to lead as far as maturities coming up. Um, what that also means is that they carry the heaviest debt load. So the last few years, they've had to issue at much higher interest rates, and their debt loads have looked pretty strenuous. Um, the good thing is, as rates come down, we're hoping that that sort of flips the other way and is a positive tailwind for, you know, better, you know, sort of financial stories for those states. All right. What are we looking for next week? Any cool issuance happening? Any sort of weird mall with like roller skating in it that needs some financing? <laughs> I don't know. I really mean, sure that actually sounds cool. Market. Yeah. Um, you know, the only thing that we're sort of keeping an eye on is, you know, the biggest deal that I think of interest to us is Tampa Airport. They're issuing about $500 million. 
But what's super interesting is like, I think the recovery story when it comes to air travel is really underappreciated. And if you look at sort of the employment growth for the Tampa airport area, I mean, they've blown past pre-pandemic levels, which really goes to show you that they've had a lot of embedded uh, population growth in that area, but also leisure and business travel is back, especially in the Southern Florida market. Now, obviously we're coming up in a period where we're gonna have, you know, like typical hurricane season. We don't think that's gonna be much of an issue as far as travel goes, um, but it's really sort of a reassuring sign to see so much growth there. And they're a credit that has over 700 days cash on hand. So really a good credit story to get behind. All right, Eric, thanks a lot. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, Eric Kazatsky of Bloomberg Intelligence who covers Muni's for us.